صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا لا سيما على بقية الله في الأرضين أرواحنا لتراب مقدمه الفداء السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته عباد الله وصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم كتابه المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين كفروا من أهل الكتاب والمشركين في نار جهنم خالدين فيها أولئك هم شر البرية إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك هم خير البرية جزاؤهم عند ربهم جنات تجري جنات عدل تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه ذلك لمن خشي ربه آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم These verses from Surah Al-Bayyinah. Surah Al-Bayyinah is in Juzu Amma, the 30th Sibar. They talk about two groups of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to us that people fall in two major categories. One category of the disbelievers and the other of the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these three verses very concisely and briefly explains to us what about these two groups of people. Now he starts with the first group, and that's the group of the disbelievers. Inna ladina kafaru, says. Verily, those who have disbelieved. The word al kufr originally means to hide something. That's why the farmers are also known as al kufar, meaning. They hide or they conceal the seeds in the ground so that they can germinate. It's known as al kufar. But is in the context of beliefs and theology, al kufr refers to the people who reject iman, who disbelieve in the signs of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala who do not accept the truth after it has come to them. Actually, when you read in Surah Al-Bayyina, you find that in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks of the Ahlul Kitab and Mushrikeen as people who differed and were expecting guidance to help them differentiate between the falsehood and truth. But when it came to them, they did not accept it. They rejected it. And this is why they are referred to as Al-Kuffar. Now, when in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the ladina kafaru, min ahli al-kitab wal mushrikin, this is not a new disbelief. It is a disbelief in the new religion or in the religion on, in the message that was brought to them by the Holy Prophet Muhammad and Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with Ahlul Kitab. Why? Because the people of the book have information in their own scriptures about the Holy Prophet 
about the saints. They knew him very well, but they ended up disbelieving in him, rejecting him. So the subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, in الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ and Those who have associated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the other deities, all of them are combined in one category of al-kuffar. Now, this category of people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes their fate. What is their destiny? When he says, fi nari jahannam, that all of them will end up in one place. And that is the hellfire that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And this tells us of one reality, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, no one is kinder than him, but he has a system that he has created. And he has created us with an objective, with an aim. We are not left to wander in whatever way we, we would like. Therefore, this is a consequence of the choices that we make. Those who choose to disbelieve in the clear signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they'll end up in this place. Fi nari jahannam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, khalidina fiha, they will abide there eternally in the fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll come to another point here after a while. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this group of people that it is the worst of the creatures. Ulaika hum sharrul bariya. This is the brand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to this kind of people. Those who have chosen kufr. Those who have disbelieved in the clear signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah calls them sharrul bariya. The worst of his creatures. Sharrul bariya. In some verses, in, surah, in other surahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them in similar manner. When, for example, he says, Inna sharr dawab Allah. So the worst of the animals or the ones who walk on the earth, a dawab coming from the word dabba, or yadubbu means walking. The worst of these people, of these creatures, are summul bukum those who are deaf, those who cannot hear or see. Not, because, not a condemnation to the blind or to the deaf. It's those who fold their own, uh, fold their own uh, close their own ears, close their own eyes on the truth and reject it. They do not open their eyes to see the truth. They do not want to listen to anything that is the truth. This, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, in the sharr dawab عند Allah, as-summu al-bukum, al-ladhina la yaqilun. The condemnation is not because they cannot see or they cannot hear, is that they do not think. Al-ladhina la yaqilun. They do not want to find out the truth from whatever they see, from whatever they hear. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ulaika kal an'am. The similitude of these people is like that of the animals. Bal hum adal. In fact, they are in more error because they have been given with the faculties that would help them find out the truth. They have been given the reasoning power. They do not apply it, so they end up to be the worst of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala generalizes them off, over all the creatures, says, Ula'ika hum sharrul bariya, that they disbelievers among the Ahlul Kitab. And 
other groups of the mushrikeen, they are the worst of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why are they the worst? It's because when a person is exposed to mercy, to all the blessings, to everything that favors him, everything is in his, is in his own favor, and rejects it, what else should you call that person? The worst. Here came to them a message that would save them from all calamities, from all tragedies, and from all problems. A message that ensures for them happiness in this world as well as in the hereafter. They rejected it. They disbelieved in what they saw as the clear truth. This, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that the worst of the creatures because of their own choice. When they reject and turn away from the clear signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, the person who sees this creation, this universe, that is all that is in it, and ends up not having faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his own creator, as his own sustainer, is the worst of the creatures. Then the second group that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes uh, is the group of the believers. In the Ladina Amanu, Wamilu Salihat, Ulaikahum Khayrul Bariya. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this group says, Those who have believed, those who have faith, and accompany their faith with good and righteous acts. These are the best of the creatures. Ulaikahum Khayrul Bariya. Now, you observe here. That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the believers, he did not just say those who have believed. Like the way he described the disbelievers, say, in the kafaru, those who have disbelieved. Here he says, those who have believed, and with their faith, with their iman, they did what is good. These are the righteous. These are the best of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this points to us that having faith alone or claiming iman only is not sufficient for the salvation of a person unless it's accompanied with good deeds. Unlike al-kufr, al-kufr by its own, without adding anything else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not describe, did not add anything to their disbelief. He don't say that those who have disbelieved and did so and uh, the following acts, they will end up here. No. That disbelief on its own, whether accompanied with bad deeds or not, rejecting the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rejecting the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, is sufficient to take a person to the hellfire. But when it comes to faith, the true faith, it must be accompanied with good deeds. I'm aware in the previous nights, one of our visiting scholars has been talking about the reality of faith and Iman. Though I think it was in Urdu and maybe some people miss certain things. I don't know what he spoke about, I saw the title like this. Iman cannot be true Iman unless it is accompanied with actions. The actions have to conform with this faith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in الَّذِينَ amanu wa amilu salihat Those who have faith and did what is good. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this group of people as the best of creatures. Raising them above even the angels. Because it is an absolute Description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulaikahum khayrul bariya. These are the best of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then describes for them what kind of reward that is awaiting them. The material reward as well as the spiritual reward. Material reward, the jannah, the gardens, that they will abide there in eternally. But besides that, it's ridwanullah. Is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
That they are pleased with Allah and Allah is pleased with them. And this is the greatest thing that is kept for those who believe. Therefore, when we talk of Iman, we talk of Al-Kufr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguishes between these groups. And as such, there's nothing like any path can lead to Jannah or can be a means of salvation. There's a clear path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has charted for us that one has to follow. You cannot Create your own path and claim that this is going to save you or going to lead you to the salvation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One has to follow the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has charted for him. This is why in the end of this verse, he says, ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ خَشِيَ This is for the one who has this khashiya towards his creator. Khashiya Rabba. Now, khashi is not like just fear. It's not equivalent to al-khawf, just having khawf. But it is that kind of worriness, that kind of fear that is mixed with love, with respect to the one that you having this attitude towards. Is having this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that helps you or makes you be wary of committing any sin, of going against his commands, of angering him because of the love, the intense love that you have for him. This is the path, the path of taqwa, the path of khashia to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on this point, we are living in the month of Sha'ban, and we mark several occasions. We have had the birthdays of the best of mankind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought to us. We are celebrating their birth. The birth of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the path of Abdul Fadl Abbas, the path of Al Imam Zain al Abidin, alayhi salam, and the path of others that is coming. These are the days that we are reminded of the best of the creatures. Khayrul Bariya. Indeed, when you read in the books of a hadith across the Muslim books, with uh, the Sunno Shia books. You find a description of who are these Khayrul Bariya. Just as an example, if I quote Al Hakim Al Naisaburi, one of the distinguished scholars among his, the Sunni scholars of the fifth century, in his book, Shawahid al Tanzil, mentioned a riwayah from Ibn Abbas saying that when this verse was revealed, in الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتُ هُمْ خَيْرُ الْبَرِيَّةِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam told Ali alayhi salam هُوَ أَنْتَ وَشِيعَتُكْ يوم القيامة راضين مرضيين ويأتي عدوك غضبانا مقحمين. That the Prophet tells Ali that the خير البرية it's you and those who follow you. You come on the day of Qiyamah well pleased and Allah is pleased with you. And your enemies come while they are in anger and they are squeezed into the hell. This you find it in the books of our brothers, Shawahid Tanzil, and similarly other books like Al Manthur of As Suyuti, 
in sawa'iq al-muhriqa. For anyone who wants to make any revision, these are available ref references readily to help him. Describing Ali salam and his followers as khayrul bariya. And in truth, the followers of Ali alayhi salam are the followers of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi salam. And they are the followers of the true message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no a, 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 a distinction for it. That's why I repeat a saying, when we talk of tashayyu, we are not talking of a sect. It is the other name for Islam, if you like. Is equal to this. It's not a sect among the sects. And following Ali Ali Islam is following this message and takes you to this path. But Ali Ali Islam was put as a sign that would guide people towards the message of the Holy Prophet. And similarly, you find a hadith across the board in books of a hadith are recognized in Bukhari and Muslim, in Babel Ahkam, in Babel Imara, in the book of Muslim, where the Prophet is reported to have said, there will be 12 commanders, Amirs. All of them are from the Quraysh. And that the religion would remain strong so long as they are this. And these are the people who have been given the responsibility of guarding and protecting the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when therefore we come to the dates that remind us of them, we celebrate the path, the birthdays of these people, we are reminded of this path of Allah. This route that takes us to becoming khayrul bariya, the best of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have faith means that the system of their belief is according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains to them, and their system of actions is also in accordance to the description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq. That we be among the khayrul bariya, the best of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may he save us from being the worst of bariya, sharrul bariya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, forgive our brothers in iman. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad. رجيم بفضل الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطاهرين My dear elders, brothers and sisters I do advise myself once again and all of you to try our level best to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get back to him, to improve on our relationships with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to acquire true taqwa, and true faith, true iman. Many things remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The season that we live in, experiencing this drought and these sufferings should remind us of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rain comes from Allah. He's the creator of this rain. He's the giver of this rain because he's the sustainer. Wallahu khayru raziqeen. People take it for granted that it is going to rain from this time to that time. Forgetting the one who causes it to rain. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in different locations of this reality that he is the one who chooses. Now you can see down here in our 
in this part of this world, we're experiencing this kind of drought which has persisted for long. While in the other parts of the world, like in Iran, they're experiencing floods. And actually, we should remember our brothers and sisters in that part of the world who have faced great challenges with the floods. And if one can extend any help to them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him. On this part of this world, the message is this. Let us remember that it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who brings this. And sometimes it is denied from us because of going astray, of forgetting Allah, of indulging in so many sins that would stop this great favor from coming to us. Some people would reject this kind of things and say it's, it is according to the nature, it's according to the way the earth is and the atmosphere and all other factors, natural factors, and it has got nothing to do with faith. But Mu'minun know that faith has an effect on this. In the whole Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that if people believed, Allah would have sustained them from the earth as well as from the, the skies. This is the truth of Iman. Now, when people believe, when people do righteous things, they are rewarded for that. Of course, sometimes you may be given certain blessings as also imtihan, as a trial. But when it comes to, see, to these natural things, we should be reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How much sins we are oblivious of. There is no Amr bin Ma'roof, there's no Nahi an al-Munkir. There's so much corruption, there's so much facade everywhere in everything. As Kenyans, we should remember Allah. We should do istighfar as much as we can. We can engage in salat al-istisqa, yes. It's a means of asking for this mercy. But it must be accompanied with the true repentance, the true tawbah from the people. Therefore, this should take us back to this. And in the same line, it saddens us to note how many crimes, you know, are there, are being committed in our own country. It has become something of a norm, something so simple, that people can carry out without thinking. A few days back ago, a young man, Nel Lored, drove from Thike and hacked his uh, friend, uh, girlfriend, to death, okay, with an axe. This was shocking. And this is not the first thing, that, it's the first time it's happening. So many such things are happening in our country every now and then. There's no respect for life. No control for anger and all that. The number of murders that you know, happen and commit in a country are so appalling. And actions need to be taken, not only to prosecute such people, but to call for a message, or uh, spread a message of kindness, of mercy, of respect to life and all that. In our neighboring country, we uh, have had of a coup, a military coup in Sudan. Very briefly, this should also remind us of one other reality, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is finally the one who has the power and would replace the kings with other kings. Omar al-Bashir ruled for decades. Maybe he never expected that he would be ousted. 
And recently he joined in the atrocities committed against the people of Yemen, sending the armies and all that. And what follows is the coup that he never you know, have expected. This is the fate of the oppressors. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us always of oppression and doing injustice to the people who are very weak. And we pray that inshallah ta'ala Sudan doesn't take a turn into another Libya and there are no bloodsheds and inshallah ta'ala there will be peace. Uh, finally, before I end, let me remind you all to take an advantage of these days to clear your debts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially the past qada. If a person has not done qada of his month of Ramadan, the past month of Ramadan, to try and clear that. Try to fast a few days in this month, qada or mustahab, to prepare yourself for the holy month of Ramadan. If one needs to pay kafar, whatever, he should do so before the month of Ramadan so that when he comes to the month of Ramadan, he is clear of any uh, thing pending. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq in these days to earn his mercy and to be on the path that he is pleased with. Allahumma salli ala muhammadin abdika wa rasulik wa salli ala aliyin amir al-mu'mineen wa salli ala Fatima al-zahara sayyidati nisai al-alameen wa salli ala al-hasani wa al-husayn sayyidai shabab ahli jannat min al-khalqi ajma'in wa salli ala a'imat al-muslimin min dhuriyat al-husayn ali ibn al-husayn zayn al-abidin wa muhammad ibn alin al-baqir wa ja'far ibn muhammad al-sadiq wa musa ibn ja'far al-qadim wa ali ibn musa al-rida muhammad ibn alin al-jawad wa ali ibn muhammad al-hadi wa al-hasani بن علي الزكي العسكري والخلف الهادي المهدي هدجك على عبادك وملائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فحملنا اللهم اغفرنا والجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات على أحياء منهم ولا موات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك السميع المجيب الدعوات إنك على كل شيء قدير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر والحمد لله رب العالمين. الله.